In this video, we're going to talk about projectile motion. Now, there's not a lot I can really add in terms of theory for projectile motion. There, there is a little bit, but for the most part, you just have to practice these problems and do the best you can to understand it. It gets better with time, and most people do struggle with projectile motion. So if that describes you later on, just know that you're in good company. Um, and most importantly for the AP exam and other things that we do in the course, um, you're expected to understand the concepts behind it and be able to make conceptual predictions and uh, explanations, but not so much be able to calculate things. Of course, we'll do labs and stuff related to projectile motion to help reinforce the mathematical side of it. But as a general rule, it's not something that we're going to overemphasize. So projectile motion basically is two-dimensional freefall. The difference being that you project the object into the air in some fashion, but it's still only influenced by gravity. So that's where projectile motion comes from. Um, if you take a ball and drop it, and then you take another one and you project it forward, then if you look at the motion of these two objects, you'll see that they remain side by side throughout the entire motion. So this ball which has been projected forward is going to make a path that looks like this, but it's going to be located here at one point in time, it'll be located here at the next interval, here at the next interval, and so on. So when it comes to doing projectile motion, you need to keep something in mind. And that is that vertically, nothing is changing. Horizontally, the velocity is constant. So what we're saying is Vx will be a constant. And Vy will be accelerated motion. But that, of course, is going to be G. It's going to be accelerated with the value of g. So we could say that ax is equal to 0 and ay is equal to 9.8 downward. Now when we look at the velocity, the vertical velocity is going to be very small in the beginning. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger during each time interval. And the vertical velocity is exactly the same for both the projected ball and the dropped ball. But horizontally, the projected ball always moves with the same speed. Now, the path of the projectile is called the trajectory. And the trajectory is always going to have the shape of a parabola. Anyways, back to the velocity for um, the, an object which has been projected. The velocity is made up of these two vectors, and they're always going to be or I should say the velocity vector is always tangent to the path. So V is tangent to the path. So that's going to be, if we do our Y component there, that's going to mean that our velocity is this. And then our Y component is there, so our velocity is that. And the velocity is increasing as we go down in our motion. The velocity is increasing, but it's also constantly changing direction. 
Now, loosely speaking, we can define three types of projectile motion. And I do this only because students find it beneficial, but projectile motion is projectile motion. It's just that. So the first kind of projectile motion we see is the throw up. And with the throw up, the properties that get attached to it are this. V initial Y is greater than zero. The reason for that is that the initial velocity points up and VX is what gives it the projection and VY is that. Now for a throw up problem, the vertical displacement delta Y it can be anything. It can be greater than zero. In other words, it, it goes up but doesn't come all the way back down like throwing a ball up onto the roof. It could be equal to zero where it starts at ground level and it ends at ground level. Or it could be negative where you take it and you throw it up and over the edge of a cliff and it ends up somewhere below you. So delta Y can be anything. Theta is always going to be greater than zero in a throw up problem. You have to have this angle right here. If you don't have a theta, then you cannot have a throw up because you cannot get this vertical velocity component. So when you look at um, the trajectory for the throw up, we see this. The initial velocity is based on this point at the very bottom, the initial projection. And if you look carefully, the initial velocity does not stay attached to this line. And this angle here, if you look, this angle here is not theta. All right, theta is going to be changing everywhere along this line. So V initial is not the same thing as, as the path. So make sure that when you draw your vector that you're looking at a velocity vector and you're not trying to draw a position vector. Now the second type of problem we see in projectile motion is going to be the throw out. And for the throw out, V initial Y is equal to zero. And the displacement, the vertical displacement must um, be less than zero. And for this, theta is going to be equal to zero. And so for a throw out problem, we have V initial looks like this. There is no angle between the x axis and the initial velocity. The path that is followed, if this is like the edge of a cliff, the path that's followed looks like this. Again, the shape is a parabola. The initial is the initial velocity at the instant it leaves your hand, and that has to be horizontal right here. Okay, finally, we have uh, the throw down problem. And with the throw down, V initial Y is less than zero. Delta Y, of course, must also be less than zero. And theta is also going to be less than zero, where when I say less than zero, I'm simply indicating that it's below the X axis. All right, we'll still use positive angles in our trig functions, but it's going to be below the X axis. For this problem, what you see is this. Very quickly, it, it assumes an almost vertical drop. Um, and the part that you don't see in the motion of the parabola is that. So the initial velocity part of this is that right there. There's a downward velocity. And we pull it off to the side. And we've got our Vx 
and there's our VY. Now we have some symmetries that we should pay attention to for projectile motion. Um, certainly all the symmetry of free fall that I spoke about before is going to be true for projectile motion and then I'm going to add one more symmetry that's particularly important. And for this, we're going to just uh, say that delta y is equal to zero, which means basically the, the starting point and the stop, the vertical starting and stopping point is going to be the same. And we'll say that is a level ground. So what's going to happen is, um, an object is going to be projected upward at a shallow angle and it's going to form a trajectory that looks like that. Another object is going to be projected upward at the same velocity, same speed, but at a greater angle. And so it's going to form a projection that looks like this. And then we're going to have another object projected up at another angle and its projection is going to look like this. And then we're going to continue to increase our angle and what we see is that the object is going to land in the same place. One more and this gets shot up at a really high angle And it looks like that. Okay, so if this angle here, we'll just say this angle is 10 degrees, then that would make the angle as measured from the ground for this other yellow line 80 degrees. If this angle that's in green, if the initial velocity for this one was 30 degrees, then the other one is 60 degrees. And this one here was 45 degrees. So what we see is this. 10 degrees and 70 degrees, those are considered to be complementary angles. And complementary angles, they produce the same range. Now the range is this dx and we give it the name the range but it's just dx okay so 10 and 80 produce the same range 30 and 60 produce the same range and 45 has no complement now when you're solving problems in projectile motion the best way to go about it is to First, set up your equations for each dimension. So we've got the x dimension and then you've got the y dimension. When you're working in the x dimension, there's only ever going to be one equation that's valid. And that's going to be d is e dx is equal to vx times t. In the y dimension, you can use any of the three that we normally use. And as a reminder, let me pop that up for you. So you can use any one of these equations in the y dimension, and that's because it is accelerated motion. However, in the x dimension, it is not accelerated. The acceleration is zero. Now, if you happen to use, say, the position function, d is equal to v initial t plus one half a t squared, what you would find is that this whole second term goes away and that v initial is going to be constant, and so you still get d is equal to v t. Same holds true if you use this equation, one half times v initial plus v final times t v initial is the same as v final and so this is just one half times two v times t and that one half cancels with that two and we get d is equal to vt and the other equation the time independent equation of motion is this 
And if the acceleration is zero, that whole term goes away. But then you get this statement that you don't really need, and that is V final is equal to V initial, which is a true statement because the velocity is constant. So that's not very useful for you. Nonetheless, d equals vt, that's the only equation you're ever going to use in the x dimension for projectile motion. But in the y dimension, you can use any one of the other three equations. You're still going to um, list out all your information in the x dimension. So for the x dimension, you would have dx, v initial x, um, and t. All right. In the y dimension, you're going to have dy, v initial y, v final y, a, y, and t. The other thing you're going to do is in step two, you're going to use vector resolution to determine vx and vy from v initial. Lastly, you need to select one of your dimensions as your primary dimension. And what that means is this. When you do problem solving in my class, I'm always going to teach it the same way. You want to make sure that you start with an equation that gets you what you want, whatever it is that you're looking for. And so, you know, maybe what you're looking for is acceleration. Let's say you've got the equation d equals v initial t plus one half at squared. All right. If you're looking for acceleration, this equation will do it. Now, these other variables may be unknown quantities for which you have to go out and you have to find d and possibly that's going to come from, uh, I don't know, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2ad. And maybe in order to get time, you're going to use, um, I don't know, v final equals v initial plus at. All right. The point is, the point is, that this equation, the very first one that we write, this is what's going to keep us anchored and knowing what it is that we're doing. Because the last thing you want to do is just start randomly using your equations and calculating quantities and you have no idea what it is you're calculating. I mean, yeah, you know you calculated a velocity if you did it right. You know you calculated a time if you did it correctly. But what do you do with it? Right. And so it's very important that you have this one foundational equation, which is going to, um, you know, keep you on track and focused on what the real problem is. And if something doesn't work, you know how to go back and change it. You can see those things that could be changed. OK, now the last really important thing to keep in mind is this, that the motion in the X dimension is independent of motion in the y. All right. However, they are linked through time and v initial. So what I mean by that is this. We have here in step three, select one dimension as the primary. Now, sometimes it's wisest to use D is equal to VX times T. And then you'll substitute everything you can. And then eventually you'll have to use your equation from the Y dimension and you'll substitute that in. But what if we're looking for V initial? You know, some of those ties, you know, like VX is V initial cosine of theta, for example. In the y dimension, v initial is equal to v initial sine of theta. And so you can see we've got a v initial here and a v initial here, and it allows us to do some things.